Yeah, good evening, um, everyone. And welcome to um, tonight's uh, live section of our project management. Uh, this night, we, are, we continue from where we stopped last night. And we are starting with a project management component. So what do we mean by project management components? The components, these mean the components that are made up of, uh, are made up project management as a structure. Meaning that um, if you remove one of these components, the project management structure will not be complete. You have a serious problem. So all these structures, all these components need to, to be intact. All these structures, these components need to be uh, together. It need to be integrated very well for you to have a successful project management experience. So that's what we mean by components. So we'll, we'll break it down and we'll take it one by one. So by the time we finish with all these components, we should be able to know how to manage a project very well. The components are the scope management, uh, stakeholder management, cost management, risk management, and change management. If you can manage your project, um, taking it one after taking these components one after the other, then you are a good project manager. Uh, no matter the kind of challenges that you might face with this structure you deliver a good uh, a good project so we are starting with scope management this is um one of um, the the major thing we need to understand why starting um, a project we need to understand the scope of what we are doing. And to understand the scope, let's look at um, what scope management means here. A scope management ensures that all processes and activities involved are well-defined and the project deliverables and output are achieved to a high standard. It defines the sources of the project as well as the input and output needed to ensure process. Please uh, mute yourself. I say mute. So, scope management helps you to understand your inputs, your outputs, means your deliverables, your tasks, your activities, your costs, your timeline all your boundaries this is what the scope management will help you to achieve It'll help you to understand your boundaries and as soon as you understand your boundaries what you are mean to do and what you are mean not mean to do within this project and the resources available the timeline available 
then we are good to go. So that's why we have to understand the scope very well. And uh, uh, scope management is not, is not a, is not a one-off activity. So it's, um, it's a continuous process within project management. You continue to manage your scope and uh, keep on managing it and refining your scope till you finish the project. Because all these are schools <clears throat> are things you, you have to do with like, uh, when you talk about timeline or budget, which is your scope, you keep on managing your timeline to make sure that you don't exceed the timeline. And you keep on managing your budget to make sure that um, you don't um, exceed your budget. So from the beginning, you need to define every deliverable, everything within, <clears throat> within the project, within this scope, everything has to be defined and stated. So, and it is there in the project charter. That is the best place we can see everything we need within uh, uh, our scope through the project charter. So how do we um, do this uh, uh, scope management? The project management scope includes the process require the process required to ensure that this the projects the project includes all the work required and only the work required to complete the project successfully. Managing the project scope is primarily concerned with defining and controlling what is and is not included in the project, just like what I've explained earlier. So how do we do that? Number one is to plan scope management. So when you want to manage a scope, you need to lay down a plan on how to manage the scope. The process of creating a scope management plan that document how the project and the product scope will be defined and validated and controlled. So you lay down a plan, how are going to uh, uh, create the, 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 the scope. You need to do that by um, collecting requirements. You need to collect the requirements to understand um, what is in and what should be out and boundaries. The process of determining, documenting, managing stakeholders need and the requirements to meet their objectives. So you need to gather requirements from the stakeholders to understand what they need and what they do not need within this project, how this project is going to be run, everything about this project, that's what we call requirements. Then after gathering the requirements, you need to define the scope with the stakeholder. You need to work with the stakeholders to define the scope. You need to know the timeline needs to be stated. The budget for the project needs to be stated. So this is the time you are defining the, the, the scope with the stakeholders. They tell you what they want and how they want to uh, to achieve it. So you need to document, that's why you define it from the beginning. And then you create a work breakdown structure. A work breakdown structure is a preliminary plan where you break the project down into structures. Structure, when you mean breakdown structure, we mean categories and subcategories. So that's what we mean. So when you break all the 
project scope into smaller um, manageable component, then that will help you to understand what you are in and what you are, um, what should be in and what should be out. After breaking down the, the project um, requirement that we gathered, then the next thing is to do validation. You need to validate all the requirements you gathered with the, the stakeholders. Validation means that after gathering requirement from the stakeholders on what they want in this project, uh, before it becomes a working document, you need to send it back to the stakeholders to look at it, to make sure that this is what they want because before it becomes, you start working with it. So once it's validated, then you can start using the documentation, the, the scope documentation as a working document, you can start using it, start working on that, you can use it to start um, controlling the project, managing and controlling the project. So these are the, the things we need to do uh, when we want to, um, the steps, these are the key steps in order to do a thorough scope management. And by the time you've documented all these, then we'll have something like, we'll call it a project brief or project mandate, where everything within the project is documented from the stakeholders who have known what they want and what they don't want. In the project brief, we'll have a, a, a timeline, the 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 budget, the key requirements, depending on the kind of projects you are managing or you're trying to deliver. So this is the time uh, you get the the first document, which is going to be the project brief. So let's look at. Um, Project scope management map, how it should be to help with this map will help you have a clear picture of what you need to do when you want to start uh, managing your scope. From the, the first um uh component within this map we have a plan scope management to plan the scope management the first thing is you look at the project charter then you look at the project management plan then you look at the enterprise environmental factors. Then you look at organizational process assets. Then you look at the tools and techniques. You look at data analysis, look at various meetings, look at the output. And the output here is going to be scope management plan. When you look at all these, we consulted the project charter and all these, follow all these, um, all these deliverables, you should be able to have a good project management plan and requirement management plan. Then when you have a scope management plan, the next thing is um, you collect requirements. These are the inputs within the system. You plan management plan, 
project documents, business documents, look at the agreements, enterprise environment, organizational process. Then you start looking at the tools and uh, techniques. You look at the SPAC judgment, data gathering, data analysis, decision making, data representation, interpersonal and team skills, context diagram, and prototype. And the output will be requirement documentation and requirement traceability metrics. But all these you are seeing all these processes is just a requirement gathering, data collection, it's just a, a way of collecting data. These are one of the major activities of business analysts. But as a project manager, you need to use this process in order to understand the, 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 uh, under to understand the scope, because as a project manager, Although you are not going to be dealing so much with um, requirement uh, analysis and the rest of them, but you need to have fundamental knowledge of the requirements of the projects you are managing. So that's why you need to apply all this um, analytic uh, business analysis technique because this uh, technique is mainly for business analysts, but you need to apply them within this uh, scope management in order to get requirement documentation and the requirement traceability metrics. And these are the key documents you are going to be using all along the project. So after requirements, gathering or data collection, the next thing is um, to define the scope. And defining the scope is analyzing the requirements. That's the time you analyze the requirements you gathered during um, data collection. All the data you collected, you do the analysis. And when you start doing your analysis, you have to still work with project charter. So that's why I, I, I stated from the beginning that project charter is very important because you can see here, almost all the activities we do is contained in the project charter. And making that when you say input here, it means we need to consult project charter. We need to look at project charter. We need to work with the project charter. It's a fundamental document. Like some of these other documents might not be using them, like um, enterprise environment factor, and uh, we might not be using them. But when, in terms of project charter, we must use project charter because everything we need to know about the project is contained within the project charter. And when we talk about project management plan, we need a project management plan. We always need it to work with the project to help us to, to manage our project, control our project, and track our projects. So by the time you've done all these, when you talk about tools and techniques, is the some of the tools and techniques you are going to be using to do this uh, analysis. And to do that, some of the tools and techniques can be um, data modeling, process mapping, mapping out um, various uh, uh, processes we have within the project. And the output here is going to be project scope statement. By the time we finish our scope analysis, analyzing all the data we gathered for our scope, we should be able to produce a document called project scope uh, statement. So we'll have a clear document about what we want 
for our scoop. And then project documents updates. When we have a complete statement, a documented statement, a clear statement of what our scope is, then we need to document, we need to update every other project document um, within this project. Because of uh, the, this change, it is a very uh, important change at this point, documenting, uh, uh, generating a scope statement. So, but in so many cases, if we have project charter, we might not need to start going through all these processes because everything is defined in the project charter. So, but it's good for you to have a good understanding and knowledge on how to plan collect requirements and uh, analyze your requirements about scope. This is just about scope. This is not about the main um, solution requirements. So by the time you've uh, gathered the uh, documented um, problem scope statements, the next thing you'll be looking at is creating work breakdown structure. To do that, you look at the project management plan, project document, and enterprise environment factors, organizational process assets. In so many cases, this document might not be available because I've been in a situation, none of these documents is available, but at least you must have a um, project management plan. No matter how unorganized a project might be, they must have a project management plan, which we need to, to work on. So, and then to create a work breakdown structure, the output will be scope baseline and the project document updates. Scope baseline is that you baseline your scope that this is the scope. Anything outside that scope is now becoming a scope creep, moving out of the scope. You documented the scope baseline. Baseline is drawing a line. This is the scope. You can't go if, if you are. Your budget is 10,000 pounds. At this point, if you are baselining your scope within the budget, it's going to be 10,000. It cannot exceed 10,000. If you are, your scope, your timeline scope is um, six months. When you are baselining it, it's six months, and it can't go beyond six months. So. So you can use some tools like uh, project management, um, uh, Microsoft projects and the project labor. These are two softwares I use for my project management. Once you use this particular software to baseline your scope, anything happening within the project, if you go beyond this, uh, baseline, it, you, you, you have a trigger from the, the, the software. The software will indicate that you are moving out of your scope. And that will help you to control your project very well. So after baselining, the next thing is to validate your scope. Validation means getting approval from the next line of management, which is the, your stakeholders or the project sponsor or your clients. 
they need to validate your work. Validation means acceptance. Once your scope has been validated, means that the management have accepted your scope that this is what you are going to be working on. Then you have to start working on that scope. Next thing is uh, scope uh, control. You keep on planning and control till you finish the project. So this is how we capture scope in um, a very nutshell. This is um, an adoption from PMI, which I believe is the best standard in uh, managing scope. There, if you go through other uh, school of um, um, thought or within pro so many other school in project management, they can come with their own uh, way of managing scope. But PMI, I believe is the best way and the best approach. They believe that their theory is always the best. And that's what I'm using in managing my, my various projects and um, is giving me results. So this is um, how we are going to um, be managing our school, following all these processes, one after the other sequentially, and uh, is going to give us the kind of results we want. But the main important thing is to understand project charter. Because if you understand project charter, all this long grammar here, you might not need them. The key thing is to understand the project charter because everything you are doing, you must have to do it from the project charter. All the inputs, all this analysis, everything you do here, you do it from the project charter. And you might find out that if you are joining an organization or a project, you know, which have done to, uh, happened to me, you find out that they don't have project charter, it becomes difficult for you to even understand what you are doing. And then that will lead you to, as a project manager, you demand to create a project charter. You need to understand what you are doing. And why it's good to have a project charter is that, number one, project charter will help you to understand your scope which is the key important thing for you to deliver in projects because project charter contains scope, the problem statement, everything you need about project is contained within project charter. So personally, I use project charter to manage my scope. That's what I use. And most of the organizations, like those who doesn't have project charter, I help them adopt project charter and they help us to manage our project very well. So understanding project charter has covered everything you need to know about project scope. A project scope and project charter. Project charter is a big document, is the, is the authority in your project you are managing. That is the authority, gives you the, the authorization to do anything you are doing with it. any project and you don't have a project charter, then nobody authorizes you to do anything. Even the money you are spending, you are spending it at your own risk because there is no authorization. You might be working in a small company which, and they don't care, but you don't need to imbibe the culture. You need to, to, to develop this culture that you must work with a project charter because you might work in a, a public sector 
where it's very good to you must do you must be accountable if you're a project manager you are accountable to that project if anything goes wrong you must have to uh, to say something about it you might be representing the government just like we're saying um, when we're um, talking about um, our timeline and the rest of them project charter gives you power to spend money you might find yourself running a project worth of two billion pounds of public uh, money taxpayers money and if you don't have project charter if anything goes wrong you might find yourself going to prison and i've seen that so many of uh, i've seen a friend who, uh, a big, a big boy, something goes wrong and all of them, they find themselves in prison because they didn't manage that, their project very well. If they have done what they are supposed to do, there's no way they can uh, land that themselves in that kind of trouble because of lack of proper management. Some people just start project by creating a project plan and start uh, tracking deliverables without project charter. That is not a good practice. So to understand the project scope within project charter, we look at the define the project scope, project charter overview, project charter sample, and the project scope statement. Define project scope is the process of developing a detailed description of the project and the product. The key benefit of this process is that it describes the products, the service, or result boundaries and the acceptance criteria. In Projects, you need to understand the project scope and the product scope. We have project scope and we have product scope. Product is within the project. Well, project is a wider environment. So, Understanding project uh, scope is quite different from understanding the product uh, scope. So let's see how to understand that from project charter. Understanding the scope from project charter, the project charter will tell you the project purpose. Project charter will tell you the measurable project objective and related success criteria. Project charter will tell you the high level requirements. High level project description, boundaries and key deliverables. Overall project risk. Summary of milestones pre-approved financial resources, key stakeholders list, project approval requirements. That is what is um, consult success and um, what you call a success criteria. That's what I mean by approval requirement, project approval requirement you must reach a standard before your deliverable uh, requirement need to be approved. And that means what is success? If any deliverable need to reach an acceptance criteria before your line manager need to uh, approve that. 
In Project Charter, it will, <coughs> it will it be clearly stated what success looks like. Project exit criteria. What are the conditions to be met in order to close or cancel the project or phase? It must be stated within the project charter, the exit criteria. Assigned project manager and their responsibility and their level of authority. Name and the authority of the sponsor or the persons or the person or persons authorizing the project charter. So all this information is what is contained within the project charter. And you can see within this project charter, everything you need to know about this project is here. And the scope we are talking about here, we are talking about boundaries and key deliverables. These are the key scope we are talking about, we are trying to understand within this project. Boundaries, then timeline and resources. And you can see that everything is contained here. And that's why I don't bother myself. Once I lay my hands, on project charter, I'm good to go because project charter will give me the project scope and project charter will help me to cover my ass. Project charter will help me to protect myself against any risk that might come up within this project. So that's why I keep talking about project charter. It's very important. So all of us as project managers, we need to understand how project charter works, how to create a simple project charter, and how to make use of information in project charter, and how to demand for project charter, uh, knowing that if you are demanding for project charter, your project doesn't have a project charter, you demand for it. Anyone who knows project management and you know that you are demanding for a project charter in a project that doesn't have a project charter, know that you are a, a professional project manager. You know what you are doing. So, and the product project scope statement from the time you, by the time you consulted the project charter, you come up with the project scope statement. The project scope statement um is the project scope description progressively elaborated at this point because in project charter the project scope within the project charter will be at high level high level means that um, is is still at um is not detailed that's what I mean by high level. When you say high level uh, requirement, you mean a chunk of requirement that is not detailed. So when you are getting it from the project charter, it's still at high level. So when you extract the project scope from project charter, then you elaborate it, define it in detail. And when you define it in details, what you are going to get is project scope statement. And this will give you a progressive elaborated uh, description of the project uh, school, the project deliverables, acceptance criteria, and project exclusions. Exclusions means what you shouldn't uh, include in this project. Acceptance criteria means the acceptance, the, 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 the minimum standard before the project, any deliverable within the project must reach a minimum standard. That's what uh, we call acceptance criteria. And here you can see that all the key deliverables is equally detailed. So that is um, how we define project um, a scope. So 
So the main thing is to look for project charter. But once you get project charter, you've got your project scope. That's the simplest way to do it and to understand it. So this project chapter we'll be talking about. Let's have um, a deeper look. Let's understand project chapter uh, more. A project chapter is a one-page document that summarizes the fundamental information of a project before it begins. So this document summarizes the whole project. The project has not begun at this point. So, so that's why as a project manager, you need to uh, demand, you, you might uh, be hired to, to work on a project where the project charter has been developed. So you might not be part of the team developing the project charter. If you happen not to be part of the team that developed the project, it's very, very important you demand for it. If they don't have it, try to create one and get a validation. It clarifies the project objectives and their scope address the need of the stakeholders and define the rules and responsibilities of the project team. Everybody's rules and uh, responsibilities, everybody, every stakeholder, key players within that project, their responsibilities are being captured within the uh, project chapter. Project chapter is critical for obtaining leadership support and commitments to provide the necessary funding and resources. Once the project charter is signed, it authorizes the project leader, which is the project manager, to formally start the project and start um, using the necessary resources. Like I said earlier, once you get an authorization, that's when you can start spending money within that project. But if it's not authorized, everything you are doing within that project is illegal. If you want to uh, apply the best practice, if the project charter is not authorized, you don't have rights to spend ten, um, a dime within that project, because you don't have authorization, you don't have power to spend any money. Doesn't matter well, whether the, they say do this or do that, you can be doing what they ask you to do um, because you want to get paid, you want them to see that you're hardworking. But mind you that if anything happens, everybody will deny you. Project charter includes the problem statement, goal statement, scope, and boundaries, business impacts, project teams, and the project timeline. That is it because once it's authorized, it means that you know what you are doing. If you have the project charter, you, are, you have it and it's approved for you, then you can start um, managing your project, doing spending money, resources, because you know what you are doing. At this point, it's believed that you know the problem statement. You have the problem statement, you know the problem the organization is facing, the reason why they are sitting or why that project is going on, the goal, and you know the scope, area you need to cover and boundaries, no go area, don't cross this place. No matter what you are doing, don't cross this boundary, it's not part of your project. So you need to define the boundaries. <clears throat> uh, 
this boundary of thing is very important because you might be a project manager in a very large program. What I mean large program is that you can have up to 10 projects running at the same time. And these 10 projects are highly related. And you might have one program director or one program manager managing these uh, nine projects. And these projects are highly related. So if you don't know your boundaries, you might see yourself into another person's project lane because you don't know your boundaries. So that's why you need to know what you are doing. You might be, your, your, your project might just be to migrate data, just data migration from um, on premise to the cloud. And this cloud application, you are migrating data from one place to the other. You might find other people working on other projects within this cloud application. But your own is just data migration. You need to understand the boundary that you are, what you are doing is data migration. So you need to understand the particular applications, the database, where this data is going, the kind of data you are migrating. You need to understand the type of data you are migrating. Are you migrating customer's data? Are you migrating financial data? Are you migrating employee data? So it might be a data migration, but you need to understand the kind of data you are migrating. That's when you're trying to define the boundaries or what we are doing. If you do not understand your boundaries, maybe you are there just to migrate um, customers' uh, data so that the, maybe the global team, the global marketers, can have access to the um, customers, that particular customer's data in order to take a quality decision and do their analysis. But if you don't understand you are migrating all the customer's data, you might just go and migrate all the data and that will be very catastrophic. You might just migrate the employee data that's not meant to be on the cloud. And that would be a problem. So it's good to understand project scope and know the boundaries of what you are doing. You need to ask so, many, so much questions. Asking so much question means, like I said earlier, data collection. You collect a lot of data to understand what you are dealing with. Know your boundaries. Project charter should provide answers to the following. What must be done? Why doing it? What are the benefits of the project? When must this be done? And who is uh, involved? So once you have all this, you know everything is set for you to start your project because you know what must be done and the uh, why you are doing it and the key benefits, the objectives, and when must it be done, the timeline, and who is involved, team members, stakeholders, these are the people. So you must know who is uh, involved. At the, at the early stage, um, of my career in IT, I was um, analyzing a requirement. And after that, I need to send my reports 
Well, I didn't understand um, stakeholder management very well. So, and after then, I made my report available to everybody within the organization. I, I sent uh, a, a bulk email to everybody. I was just trying to, to, to be um, transparent to make sure that everybody see what I'm doing. But that's not what I'm supposed to do. I have a line manager where I should submit my report. I shouldn't make my, my what I do uh, available to everybody. So when you need to understand who is involved, you need to understand their level of involvement and the, 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 the communication plan, what needs to be communicated. But we're coming to that in uh, stakeholder management. But it's part of the things within the project um, charter and the scope management. You need to understand who is involved so that you, you won't um, send the right document to the wrong person. After gathering requirements about your scope, you need to do scope prioritization. This will help you um, to get everything done in a very professional way. Although you must have uh, gathered the requirements, you know who is involved and who is not involved, but it's good to apply this uh, prioritization mechanism and the prioritization mechanism which is Moscow tell you what must be included project cannot do without uh, some of these things you need to understand what must be included. If you are doing stake, um, uh, stakeholder management within the, try to understand the stakeholders within the project, which is part of the school, this will help you to know whom and who is involved. They are most. And you, you, you can't afford to neglect such people. This will help you to know the amount of timeline you have, the amount of requirements you must include. Then when you must have identified what must be included in that project or in that requirement, the next thing is so um what should have should have is a good is good to have but is slighter in a in a, in a difficult situation you can let go of uh, should have deliverables if you are struggling with your timeline in your project. And for instance, you are developing an application. Looking at your um, scopes with this prioritization, you must deliver some set of um, features, or you must deliver a minimum viable solution but you don't have enough time to deploy everything captured, but you must deliver something to the stakeholders and you don't have enough time. Then it means you need to drop some requirements. 
in order to at least deliver something. Then if you come to this uh, prioritization, what you'll be looking at, the number one thing you need to drop is a uh, could have. After dropping could have requirements, and you feel that you cannot still deliver, then you come up to should have. And after dropping should have requirements, if you come to must have, there is no way you can drop any requirements within this um, within this uh, section. Is a must have. So these are the key requirements you must go with. You must do everything possible to deliver requirements that uh, have got a must have. So, but if you have enough time and enough resources, then you should include, should have. You still have enough time and enough resources. You should include, could have as well. But if you don't have enough requirement, could have can come up in the subsequent releases. And you don't have enough requirements, if you can come up with only uh, must have, should have, should then come up in subsequent releases. Then we'll come down to won't have. Would have and the things, even if you have enough uh, time and enough resources, you won't have this. Don't, this is a boundary. You shouldn't include, you, 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 they are there for you to know that they are boundaries. The requirement, the, the solution you are developing or the project must not have this requirement. So if, for you to know, so if you are by mistake including requirement from this won't have, then you know you are looking for trouble because it's clearly stated that this solution will not have this. For instance, in a project, they are telling you that you, you must not, you must not exceed six months in this project is a must. This project must close by the 60th month. Nothing can make the management to approve more timeline for this project. As a matter of fact, that is final. This six months is final. And this budget, then you know that seventh month is a no, no, no. So if you, if you are a very small project manager, within your requirements, you just put it within your scope. Seventh month must not. And that will help you to know how you manage your time. If they say that, no, 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 10,000 pounds is the final, final, um, budget for this project from the beginning you know that is that is the budget then you should know try as much as you can to start working within that budget because you know you are not getting anything and if you feel that that money is not enough then you should argue it before you start that project after analysis and you feel that this amount of money is not enough, then you have to um, raise it up that you cannot deploy this solution or you cannot manage this project with this amount of money, or you cannot finish this project with, within six months. That is not possible. You raise it from the beginning, that from your own expert judgment, that is not possible. Maybe you have managed similar projects in the past. You can bring in your previous experience and that can help you to get more um, resources or, or increase your scope. 
But if such a things are not there, then it's a no, no, no. Only if it's something beyond their control, like unforeseen circumstances, like a pandemic, everybody knows that, or maybe natural disaster or war or something like that, then everybody knows that it's not your fault. But in a situation where everything is uh, normal, it's just that um, you couldn't manage your, your resources very well, then that is your business. Then let's look at Scoop. We are selling Scoop. Scoop Creek. Scoop Creek in Project Management refers to changes, continuous or uncontrolled growth in the project scoop at any point after the project begins. This can occur when the scope of the project is not properly defined, documented, or controlled. It is generally considered harmful. Scope creep is a very, is, it happens often, but is a, is, a, is a bigger offense in project management. And um, as a project manager, if you are looking for a job, it is a must. They, they need to ask you how do you manage your scope creep. They might not go directly to ask you the question how do you manage your scope creep, but they might tweak the question. But the end point is that they must assess you on how to manage your scope creep. These are the things we need to do document from the beginning. That's why I'm talking about scope, 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 because when you get it right from the beginning, then everything will become very smooth. But when you start struggling with your project scoop, you don't even understand your scoop. You don't even, it means you don't know what you are doing. You are doing guesswork. In projects, we don't do guesswork. You must get it right before you begin. So once you, are, you, you define the scope, understand the scope, apply all these techniques, then you should be able to prioritize your scope, know your scope boundaries. Then there is no way a scope, a project scope can uh, keep growing. But if you don't have a scope, a project you might uh, manage in um, six months might end up in one year because the scope keep increasing, increasing, you see one you don't you don't even know the state the stakeholder that um, you are working with everybody in the organization might seem to you to be a stakeholder in your project but they are not not everybody you see in the organization is a stakeholder in your projects yeah they work they are their staff in the, in the company they work there but they are not your stakeholders and if some of them might want you to do one thing for them or do the other things for them, help them out. Maybe they are struggling within their own projects and they are looking for, for, for somebody who will help them carry their load. If you don't know what they are doing, everybody will, will, will put their, their workload on you and you start carrying everybody's workload. And there's no way you can, you can, you can deliver your own projects and deliver other people's projects. It's not gonna work. I was in a project where I was meant to capture employee data. And the employee data that I mean to capture is the, the permanent employees and the contract employees. But along the line, um, a stakeholder 
came up with um, another requirement that I should add uh, vendors data as well. I should capture vendors because this company works with a lot of vendors. And if I should start capturing vendors data, there is no way I can uh, finish this project within four months timeline that I was mean to deliver this project. And lucky enough, I understand my scope very well. It was stated that I need to capture employee data. There is no way I was meant to capture uh, vendors uh, or contractors uh, data. And I said, um, I said, no, I'm not going to do that. And the, and the stakeholder said, why? I said, because it's not within my, the, my, my project scope, that my project charter stated that I should do this and I should do that. And I should do this within this timeline. And this is the time I have to capture both employee, uh, employee permanent and the contract employee data. If I should start capturing um, vendors data as well, this project is not going to end in four months. And I'm not going to do that. But if you want me to do that, you have to put it in writing, use the exceptional circumstance. Tell me the reason why I should go against the project chapter and start doing all that thing that is not contained within the project chapter. And I will gladly do that. And the stakeholder didn't come back again because he find out that I knows what I'm doing. That's how you can manage a scoop creep. When some of these stakeholders they want you to do what you are not supposed to do. Then go to project charter. Make a reference to project. That's why I'm talking about project charter because it's a document, the document that is regulating the project. That this is what the project charter stated. This is what I should do and what I should not do. So, how do you avoid scope creep? Clear, well managed scope is a key element for successful projects a clear, well-managed scope. So you must clearly manage your scope very well. Scope statement should include both features in and out of scope, in and out, what is within the scope and what is out of scope. That's what I mean by in and out of scope. Business analysts can attribute to clear, School within effective requirement uh, elicitation. Like I said, that most at times the, is the activity within the business analysis. A project manager can equally use that. So you must be uh, clear about your school with effective requirements. And many people. Business analysts during their requirement, this is one of the things they document very well. Project managers should include a change management process in the scope management plan. So if there should be a change in scope, it must be there. It must be documented how the scope must change. And to do that, you you must document that if, it, if there must be a change, the stakeholder must document the scope within a change request form. And you and your team need to analyze the scope, uh, the, the, the changes that the stakeholder wants to, to, to apply. And then come up with the impact either the negative or the positive impact. The impact must be stated clearly so that everybody will know the impact of this, um, impact of this change before it's uh, authorized. After knowing the impact and the line manager, which is the, the pro, either the senior project manager or program director or 
the, pro, the, the project uh, sponsor, after seeing the impact you and your team have analyzed and still go ahead and approve the change, then they will make a um, provision for the change. They will make um, either they increase the timeline or they increase the budget. Then you do what they ask you to do because you are working for them. But it must be documented. So if you are missing your timeline at this point, you are not being considered, your project is not being considered as a failure because a change happened along the line, which is approved. Establish and follow requirement process for scope modeling, analysis, prioritization, traceability, and the change management. So you need to follow all these processes, scope modeling, analysis, like we, we see in this uh, scope, um, scope management map. Sponsors should develop project charter to keep ownership. You must, the sponsor of that project from the beginning before even um, engaging the project manager, must have a project charter. If they don't have, that's why I say you should, you should demand for project charter so that you understand what you are dealing with. For the sponsors, they should have a project charter. They should uh, develop a project charter to keep the ownership of the project. Use a tools like RACI that is responsible, accountable, consulted, and informed. RACI metrics to manage rules and responsibilities of projects. This will help you to educate your team members on what they need to do and what they don't need to do, making sure that no one is doing another person's um, job. Everybody knows what they are supposed to Everybody knows what they are accountable. Everybody knows what they are responsible for. Everybody knows whom they are reporting, whom they need to inform. If there is an issue, everybody knows whom to consult. Educate sponsors to chunk projects into shorter or sub projects and to focus on tight deliverables. If the project becomes so big, if the scope becomes so big, then it means that it's time to break this. Uh, project into smaller projects. It's no longer good enough to be, uh, to be one project because it, the scope is too wide, it's too big. It's better to have a tight scope. So if a project started growing, then it's time to break it down and it become a program. So that's how to manage uh, scope creep. So that's the best way to manage your scope um, very well. And uh, I need to take questions from you guys at this point. So, um, if you have questions, you come up with your question and um, I'll start clearing your questions. Okay, uh, we need to we need to look at a sample of um, project charter, and this is the how a project charter can look like. This is um the simplest sample of a project chapter. Okay. 
This project chapter you're looking at is a very powerful document. Once you have this document, you are good to go with your project. All this elaborate scope management and the rest of them, this is what you need. This is the heart of the project. I call it authority in projects because it gives you everything you want. It's a small document, but it's a very powerful document. Here you see the problem statement is captured here. So with one document, you know the problem. So the problem, what is the problem? You know, is it that um, the revenue uh, goes down by by thirty percent within the last six months? It's a big problem to organization to lose thirty percent of their revenue in six months. So they must take the, the matter seriously and find out on how to stop such from happening. So if that is their problem. Then you look at the, the goals. So their problem is uh, dwindling revenue. And now to, to improve their revenue, looking at um, goals, maybe developing a solution that will help them to increase their revenue by increasing sales. Increasing sales, it means uh, they either getting more customers or retaining the existing customers, increasing customer loyalty rates. So making sure that their customers are loyal, that once their customer uh, comes in, they are not going out. And their customer will, will speak good words about their, pro their products. So we are looking at a solution that will help them do that. Maybe they don't have online presence. Everything they do is analog, but these days every every business is online. Maybe they're looking at developing, looking at taking them to the to the cloud, start doing their, their business online. This can be their goal statement. That is objectives. Then here you know your project leader. If you're part of this project, you know your project leader. Who is the project leader? The project manager. You know everybody who lays hands on this knows the project um, manager. And then here you know the project team. And the team members, all the project team members, their name here and their rules. So you know everybody by what they are doing, you know their name and you know them. So you can call your team member by their name and you can call them by their role because you know them. The project charter has stated everything. Then here, it states the project approach. Project approach is what methodology are you going to use? It has been decided from the one here that you are going to use agile methodology. So along the line, you jump in and start using waterfall. You are on your own. You are leading. You are you are moving towards uh, failure because this project stated that you should use agile, agile, agile approach. So there is no reason reason for you to say uh, for you to change anything here. You must need approval to change this. Um, project uh, charter before the before the project starts not why after going halfway you say you need to change it you cannot do that so you you here you see the support personnel you know all the personnel that people that are supporting you in this project uh and their roles like the project sponsor their finance manager who approves um, uh, money and the rest of them, everything, everybody that supports you, subject matter expert, uh, process uh, 
domain expert, all of them, everybody that is contained, you can see that is now beginning to help you to understand your stakeholder as well. You've not even done your stakeholder management, uh, stakeholder analysis, but here this is not giving you a clue of who is your stakeholder, whom you need to contact for your stakeholder uh, management or stakeholder analysis. And down here is the scope, it's showing you the scope. The key scope within this project, both uh, timeline, budgets, uh, uh, key deliverables, features, and a lot of them. See key deliverables here, it's contained here. Now you see the start time, we tell you when this project is starting, and estimated completion time. Everybody knows that project uh, is dynamic. It can um, exceed the, the, that's why it said estimated. So you know that once it's in six months and you are in seven months, even if you receive the um, approval for that, but you still know that this is the original completion date. You now know that you are working on uh, extra, uh, based on exceptional circumstances. They have, they've given you more time to, to, to finish your project. And now here you see milestones. These milestones are areas, um, sources areas within this uh, project. You know that once you reach a milestone that um, you, you've achieved this something, you've, uh, that's a success within the project. You can enter milestone two without um, getting to milestone, mean that there is progress. So milestones are key success um, timelines within the project. If this project is uh, divided into four stages like uh, initiate stage, define stage, execute stage, and closure stage. You know that after initiate stage, if you completely, uh, if you complete all the deliverables within the, the, the initiate stage, then you are moving to define stage. So at the end of initiate stage, you should, with, I consider it to become a, a milestone within the project, you've successfully initiated that project. Then the fine stage is a, a time you do a thorough analysis, maybe to understand the solution, to design the solution. By the time you finish designing the solution, then, and it's approved that yes, this is the, solu the, uh, this is the solution architecture we are looking for. Then is a success, which is another milestone. And then another milestone here is um, execute stage. By the time you have executed, maybe you run one or two or three sprints using Agile Scrum methodology to deploy various um, features. Then it's considered a milestone because you've actually started rolling out features. So by the time you finish and uh, closing this project at the closure, writing your project uh, closure report or getting um, acceptance um, um, uh, sign off from the client that the client is happy with the project or the project initial uh, sponsor is happy with the project, that is a uh, another milestone. That's how you break. So you know when you're having your milestones, what you are celebrating at every point, because there should be a celebration. Once you, you reach a milestone as a project manager, you should take your project team out for, for a cup of drink and you people um, celebrate and make merry because it's not easy. So when all these things are understood, you see here, all these things are here highly documented, then you come here, you see 
signature. These are signatories to these uh, projects. Who are the key signatories? The project leader, which is the project manager, you append your own signature and the sponsor, whoever is the sponsor owns, who the sponsor is the owner of that project. And then put the signature here and put dates here. So he's now authorizing you to go and deliver this project. You have these documents. So you need, if anything happens, anything, if you have a problem within this project, that is considered as a risk. As long as you've applied all the best practice within this project and it's highly documented, everything you are doing, you are documenting it. And something goes wrong after still applying the best practice, documenting everything, and something goes wrong. Then anything can go because project is full of risk. This project charter will now become your backup. Even if they are taking you to court for one negligent or whatever, you should be able to who will say who even authorized you to, to run this project. Even if you are you are not um, competent, they feel that you are not competent. Yes, if you are not competent, but you will receive the authorization to run this project. So whatever they say, this uh, this is not only helping you to understand your project, it helping you to back up yourself against any, any risk in future. So that is it. So if, if you are, for instance, managing a big project within uh, London underground, you are trying to um, uh, build a new track or introduce a new train within the system, and all of a sudden, one of the trains, um, something happened. So, uh, Mr. Graham, you are raising hand because this, um, uh, I said London Underground, and they talk about um, health and safety. Um, you can um, come up with your question. Okay, good evening, Mr. Charles. Uh, good evening, uh, everyone. I want to know if um, this project, project charter, is it a must that has to be one page? Considering the fact that most of the times the projecting members might be more, and also the scope can be more, and uh, support personnel can also be more so is it a must that it has to be one it's, it is not a must it's not a must because i've seen projects chat out that are even seven pages you know okay. but but the, the 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 concept is that um i'm not the one that brought uh, the concept that project a one page document but i've seen uh project but it means to be what well, it means one page that it means to contain everything in high level Okay. Uh, most of the things here, like here, you are not coming here to start the describing the, the, the scope in details. You just capture the scopes here, like um, uh, one year timeline is enough for the project duration. Uh, 50,000 pounds budget for the project, that is enough. But the timeline, what you are writing, um, scope statement, then that's when you describe the timeline, how this timeline will be used and the rest of them, and even the budget. You start, everything will be more in detail within the um, scope statement. Scope statement is a document of its own. So I don't, you know, uh, most of the time I do work with my project charter because it contains everything. You know, I, I do at times detail my own project charter. It mustn't be one document. So that is the answer to the question. Okay. But according to our this thing, the main thing is to have a project charter. That is the bottom. And the project charter 
is, is, is signed, authorizing you to do your job. It mustn't be one document. Okay, thank you. Yeah. No. Any more questions? Well, this, this project charter, um, well, good evening. To... Okay, good evening. Okay, um, I just want to ask a question. Okay. When um, the project kind of goes out of hand because of the scope creep, yeah. Um, how do you get back on course? One. Then, secondly, what if the client or project owner is insisting on um, some new? I don't. Okay, let me give an example. So, um, 2019. I had a project I was doing for my company and um, it involved installation of some security gadgets in the company in Kainji, um, inclusive of RFID, access control doors, um, staff attendance, biometric staff attendance, some motion sensors and some other things. Now, what was not specified was the type of doorknob to be used in their um, control room and we delivered the door it was supposed to be a security door we delivered the door and that, that door knob now became a problem so that set us back even the milestone because of course we're, we're running the project from abuja sending people to kainji to do this the, the project and all of that so that set us back they rejected the door so the door had to be they had put the door they now had to remove the door Take, bring it back to Abuja, take another door back to Kainji. There were so many things that they now added that we had to paint some things we had to know. They were not in the original um, scope that we discussed with them. It wasn't documented, unfortunately. Only the milestones were documented. So when you have, when you come across a client like that, that it's other man and it's like, no, you have to do this and do that and it affects your, your, your timelines how do you manage that because it actually scattered everything that we're supposed to do we didn't yeah, the, meet the time the the, the the timeline was project just like i said um i used an illustration uh, to, to to explain this earlier on when i was capturing data for um when i was capturing employee data you know, that's when I was uh, working with uh, Telefonica. So, and that particular. Came, huh? What happened? So, hmm? that part, please uh, mute yourself. Hmm? So, what you need to do, because we know that such things will happen, that's why we have been uh, talking about scope creep. We have an uh, exceptional circumstance and we have change request uh, form. If such a thing happens, such issues need to be captured as exceptional circumstance. It should be captured with change request. So if the stakeholder insisting that you do this, let this be captured and then be after capturing such issues that such things need to be added within the scope for you to get uh, for the stakeholder to be happy knowing that this is going to affect the timeline and is equally going to affect the budget you need to analyze that with your team to clearly state the impact of that particular um, capture. And after analyzing the capture, you must detail the impact. The actually, the impact must be negative because you are going to uh, miss your timeline and your budget is at risk. And then you send it back to the client to approve. It's actually the client that is going to equally approve it. 
So when the, the client knows that, uh, of, see, actually the client that asks you that you must capture this, this means that the client needs to increase the funding. When the, the client approves that, the client needs to improve the, the, uh, increase the funding and increase the timeline, timeline and approve for you people to continue within the new timeline. But you cannot um, run such a, a situation within the original timeline or within the original budget. It's not possible. So you must get approval for that. If you are, if you are, running, if you are working with a good uh, project manager, the project manager should know how to capture all these things. And that shouldn't have scattered everything you people have done. Because there is risk, we know there is risk in in uh, in, uh, in in project. So you must document how to manage this kind of risk. You must document from the beginning how to manage scope creep because it's a risk in project management. You must have a plan of how to manage this risk, how to mitigate this risk. Once this thing is, being, is happening, the first thing you need to do is to capture this with um, red log. And once you have a meeting within the red log, uh, this is a, an issue. Within the red log, you say, how do you mitigate this? Looking at the red log, red log will tell you, you have to be capturing all this in the red log, how to mitigate it. Exceptional, then you go to the risk uh, management uh, plan you developed and look at how to, to manage this risk. And to manage the, this risk, let the, the, the stakeholder give you people approval by documenting uh, change requests, uh, filling change requests from signing change requests, and then giving approval. Let the appropriate authority uh, give approval. But if you send this and the appropriate authority refuses to to approve the, approve the change request, then you yourself, you stick to your original plan and close the project when the project is supposed to be closed. If they are, if they are mean to, to, to supply uh, doors for you people, you need to make sure that the doors they are supplying is of the good standard. You have acceptance criteria to check the kind of doors you install. Because it means that you people don't have acceptance criteria. You should have checked the doors before installing the doors. Make sure that the doors meet the, the criteria stated. If you didn't check that, then it means the, 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 the project manager is not sound. Because even before ordering the door, you make sure that the door meets the, the, the standard. Some doors you need to be uh, brought in for testing, making sure that they, they, they meet before if you are going to install so many doors or whatever thing you are installing, you must make sure that it meets the requirements. Requirement is not only IT requirement, this is material projects. So you must have acceptance criteria as well. Acceptance criteria, making sure that, that those doors, if it's a fire door, it meets the acceptance criteria for the fire door and it fits the purpose. If it's a security door, you make sure when, when you demand for a security door and they supply fire doors, one day, so you must not every door you accept because it doesn't mean, it's because you people accepted the wrong materials, which is way below the acceptance card. That's why you had this problem. So it means that you people started even failing before then. But even at that, you see, even at that point, you still need to, before you, you go for, 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 for more funding and um, uh, more, more extension of time, you should uh, uh, make an input for an approval. I hope I've answered your question. Yes. Okay. So 
that's why it's good to understand the scope very well because it can be dangerous. Once you miss the scope, then the next thing is you are falling into a pit. So um, we are stopping here tonight. And uh, tomorrow we start uh, with another component and that's going to be um, stakeholder management. There's another big topic on its own because once um, Olusegun is raising hand. Yes, Olusegun. Yeah. All right, thanks, Mr. Charles. Thank you. Very much. So I just wanted to add, I've actually dropped it on the chat that um, uh, project uh, milestone and the project phase, can they be considered the same? Yeah, project milestones and project phase um, is closely related, but they are not uh, uh, the same thing, you know. A deliverable can be a milestone within a project phase. When we are working on within like, for instance, um, initiate, uh, when you, are, you break project down into phases, that's remain a phase. But there are some deliverables. Once you maybe you will say when you reach this so, so, so deliverable, then like uh, within the defined stage, uh, the initial stage in a project, after documenting the uh, business case, where you summarize all the things, all the work to be doing within that uh, initial stage. So business case can. Um, can be termed to become the milestone within that uh, initial stage. Yeah, but some people call the um, as um, phases uh, to be a uh, milestone. But they are not the same, they are closely related. So, Okay, that's fine, thanks. All right, thank you. So um, thank you for attending. And we meet here again for another interesting topic, uh, which is uh, stakeholder management. This is very important that you you understand this stakeholder management, you know, is very, very important, just like a school understanding the school. Because stakeholders can be a determinant of success or failure, you know, and that's why we need to understand them. Once you know how to manage them very well, understand them, you are not going to have problem with them. So thank you for attending and uh, see you here this time. Um, for... Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank Charles. You, sir. Thank you, Mr. Thank Charles. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you sir. Thank you. 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 Thank you.